Hey everyone, yes, it's DBSR here again. And what we're going to be doing tonight is talking about the LT1 Mini, which is something new that uh, was asked about. So, so many that wanted this thing to become a reality. And I've been working on this one for a while since the success of the LT1 full size. So, yeah, so what we have is the Mini. Okay, before I get to that, um, we're going to go over what the, okay, the LT1 as the main one. Uh, basically, this was a lantern that was produced, designed and produced, I should say, uh, to replace things like like this and everything you just seen over there on, on the shelf and stuff like that. These big bulky plastic things. And pretty much everything you buy online that has like horrible blue, low run times, poor modes, things like that. And this is what this was replaced to defeat those purposes and so far it seems to have been doing a great job i use the blf lt1 i have uh, three of them i have and plus the prototypes which i and the version one version two prototypes that i use uh, they're all over the house and we have power outages here quite often and i use them quite a bit for those reasons and uh, this one here sits on my night table and is used every night as a night light and a lamp when i go to bed and i turn it on i leave it actually in glow mode like this as a night light all night and this hasn't been charged now for probably a month so it's probably due for charging pretty soon but yeah it's that was the goal of it is having a light you can recharge and it would last a long time continuous run times great tint uh great modes everything you can think of possibly but we know there was a demand for a small one because these yes i agree they are not really backpackable they're you know they're heavy they're tough, they're durable, but they're like great for camping if you have a travel trailer or an RV like I'm in right now. Uh, if you're driving to a campsite, you know, motorhomes, things like that. Or if you live in an off-grid area where there's low power, uh, no electricity even, and lots of power outages. Because the fact that these will run without uh, batteries, you could actually power them from here. Or you could just use the, uh, you know, the charge port to charge it every day off solar panels and these things will give you you know infinity light for for a lifetime for as long as the batteries last uh before we get to the main i'm just going to show a little trick here that people had problems with we know that people were losing the actual cover because if you tip it up and pull it up too high it turns up so the trick i found with these things you lift it out and you just twist it sideways and there you go then you plug your charger in and no problem you're not tearing because these things are sort of mounted on like a tiny little pin of rubber so if you pull it forward tip up too far you just tear it off so if you twist it sideways out of the way then you have the port exposed then you just plug your port in or your cord in and it's fine then you just basically twist it back down push it back in, in spot and no problem because the the first one that i got the uh, the test prototype i tore it off because i was doing exactly that right so the trick was if i lift it out and twist it around it it doesn't tear off so it's great so yeah so just one of the things they could probably improve on by making that little 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 pin a little bit longer um but for now lift out twist around and plug your cord in and you'll be fine but yeah so the blf lt1 has been a success you know it's been selling and, and a lot of people bought them a, a bunch of um, my neighbors all want them but they, they've been trying to buy them on amazon things like that and I gave one to my brother, and he uses the thing continuously because he does a lot of traveling, camping, stuff like that. And we live in an area where our electricity goes out quite often. And as soon as the electricity goes out, I look around, I see these glowing lights around the house. I said, okay, I know where I'm going to find these lanterns. I just press one, and voila, I have light. And uh, there you go. So that's the full-size LT1, which is basically for your off-grid use, large camping expeditions, in RVs and travel trailers or motorhomes, things like that, or in areas where there's power ridges, uh, preparation, emergency situations, you know, disasters, things like that. That was a great idea for that. Plus the fact that it's heavy, you know, you sit it on a table in a campsite in high winds, or if you're on a mountain or not as such as a mountain, but anywhere where it's high winds, it doesn't blow over. Whereas I've had this one blow over a few times, literally, because it's, it's plastic, it's lightweight, even though I've modified it with four, um, Nickel metal hydride 18650, not nickel hydride, lithium ion 18650s, and a driver, I think it's a, a 105C in it, and some LEDs. So, yeah, still, I've, I've had this blow off a picnic table. That will not blow off a picnic table because it's much heavier. But, anyhow, let's get to the mini. Okay. So, what we have here was basically the answer to what a lot of people were asking about. It's a small version 
of the full size LT1 that can be basically put in your pocket, right? It's pretty small. It's a, it's a single 21700 or 18650 uh, base version of that. So Barry and Sofern uh, sent me uh, this one and a SB33. So I tore them both apart and did some evaluations and testing. And I found that this one is the best candidate ever to become the mini version of that. It's the called it's the it's originally the IF25. It has tint wrapping because it has two channels. It had I think it came with uh, 3K and 65K LEDs. Uh, it comes with a um, 21700 battery that's inside of it. I think the sulfur is roughly uh, four yeah the four four thousand milliamp hour. When I tested this in my in my um, BT31, I got like 4080, I think, when I were. So it's, it's actually a really good genuine battery. I give Sofer and credit for that because they do build their batteries with Honest ratings. So it's a very good battery. But you can get these up to 5000, depending on, on the, the brand name and so on. So no, And with an adapter, you can slide in an 18650 in there because there's springs on both hands springs on the upper driver and springs on the lower cap. So yeah, so we're looking at good runtime if the settings are right with a 14500. Right at 40, my mistake. I have 21700. So basically, what I did is I took the uh, the IF25 and modified or removed the removed the actual lens and the bezel and things like that. And I started playing with it for a while. I thought about it. so well to save cost because these were retailing for around I think thirty five dollars to thirty eight or forty dollars USD. So I wanted to try to build a lantern that would become in that price range and stay lower price range below the ELT1 because that's one has much more complex design and be a small version of, of that same lantern. So what I did is I started playing with uh, various different ideas to keep it from upfiring. So what it has inside here, it still has the same uh, quad TR optic because I tried it without that. I put a block of metal in there, raised the LEDs up, did all that. I wish I had video documented, but basically it went back to almost the factory, the factory uh, design, but it's raised up roughly two millimeters just so that it's, it's closer to uh, the lens. So basically what I did, let me just push these aside and reach over here and grab some stuff here. Grab a little pot, just to give you an idea of what I, what I go through when I design lanterns. Uh, for instance, I have a box like all these different lenses and shades and everything you can think of pretty much under the sun. I've did it all. I've tested it all. Like various different uh, opaqueness plastics, different you know, lenses, you know, pieces of light bulbs. Uh, you name it. It's all here. I've tested it all. Things from garden lanterns, you know, different diffusers, things like that. Basically, there's nothing I haven't tried to try to make the best shade that doesn't have glare. Believe me, there's a pot full of it here that's been tested and failed. Some of it I still will use for other testing stuff. But yeah, just to give you an idea, it's well, here, actually this one, interestingly, became the first one for the version one. Uh, thing, but I added some film into it. So I, end, I ended up you know, not being able to find uh, actual enough opaqueness in any of these. So I ended up buying a bunch of, uh, from a local light shop, uh, different opaqueness frostings of plastic sheet. So you have like like 40%, 30%, and I have some 20%, 10%, 80%, and so on. And these became like the actual lenses inside just to, to keep testing, like, you know, go from one to another to find out what gave the most light transmission with the least amount of light loss. So yeah, so so there's a whole bunch of experimentation. So just so this is just to give you an idea of what went behind the, in the time it takes to you know to design things like um, to get something to work the way I wanted to. Okay, and going back to the fact that I wanted to keep this one up firing, which is what I did. But I did an interesting uh, thing here. Let's um, do a little test experiment right here. For instance, uh, we have an FW um, three A which has um, the TR optic still in there. So basically if you turn this on and I place basically 
what started to be the design for that, the, the LT1 Mini, it's a, roughly a 10% frosting lens with a 40% frosting center cone I placed inside that. So if you lay that on this, okay, I'm going to lay this down here, and I lay this on the top. Okay, and it's hard to tell with the camera, but it's easier with the eyes of what, how it works. So there's almost no light transmission downward. It's pretty much straight up. And if you look into the thing, we can't see it on the camera, but it creates a lot of glare with the lens on top. So yeah, so you can do the same thing with, you know, diffusers like cups you put on the top, things like that. It does the same problem. You, you literally get light direction up, you get glare, you get low transmission. And I've tried, you know, things like cone silvers, round balls that was silver paint and stuff like that. Lay them on the top, you know, create and try to see if it would increase, um, you know, like it does a little bit. But the problem we have with these is you probably can't see it in this case. Uh, let me pull out a sheet of white and put it behind there. The camera doesn't really show really well with the... As you can see, there's an artifact on the top when there's no top. If you put this down, we can't really see it. Actually, you might see it a little bit. There's a sharp, hard light across the sides. This is glare. This is what hurts the eyes when you're sitting at a table and you're staring at eye level to it and you see this. Basically, you're seeing the reflection of the LEDs straight out. And you don't want that. That just makes it look like, you know, it's just hard on the eyes and so on. This is what a problem that most of factory lanterns, like, you know, the big one I showed you that has is hard lighting artifacts and glare which is exactly you can see it now yeah it's right there it's like if you, if the camera was set right you probably uh i don't know it's, it's very hard to do with the camera but yeah you can see a bunch of hard lighting lines across and and so on and almost still no downlight below the lantern itself down here there's literally nothing it creates a lot of bad glare and i tried round versions of these slightly different angles of these things and literally they don't work I, until I discuss, I started looking at something uh, that we've known that seemed to work I'm just going to push this one aside um, that worked in flashlights especially in the uh, spheric ones it's called the wavy and collar effect so this is something that I kind of discovered that it'll, it'll work with this but in a different design as we all know, the waving color is like a half sphere with a hole in the middle and the top. And um, what what it does, basically, it's the inside. Actually, I can't get this thing to work here. But anyhow, the inside of the, the actual collar is mirrored surface inside the collar itself. So what it does, you have the LED emitter in the center. It's emitting light in all directions. What the collar actually does is the mirrored surface reflects light back at the core of the LED directly because it's focused and shaped perfectly. So what it does, it increases and amplifies the light going straight out the front. So the LED is here and this thing is placed on over. So what you get is you get a bright light straight out the front. So this is how extreme spheric throwers would work with the wavy and collar effect over the top. So I thought about this idea. So is there, is there something I can possibly do to make that work with National Lantern? So yeah, so it was this. So I did experiment with a bunch of curve things the triangle thing like i just showed you a bunch of stuff like that but one i discovered the fact that i tried using the uh, if25 which has a four led tr optic same as what the um well this one has a three but it's a tr optic so i tried it with the optic and without it so it's just bare leds and with with the leds so let's turn on with the leds the advantage of this, of having the TIR, TIR optic in there, the total internal reflection, it basically shines the light upward at a straighter angle. Whereas if it was barely D's, the light angle is more straight out. Whereas this brings it up. So with the optic, there's a little less glare on, on a slight angle than it is with the bare LEDs. Bare LEDs, you're looking at a you know, hard light straight on. Um, I don't think I drew that on here, but yeah, just to give you an idea... Yeah, there it is. So bare LEDs emit light in, all, in, in a large wide angle direction. So what you're getting, you're staring at like the, basically LED filaments and such. So it gives you highlights. So by placing the TR optics, um, 
straight on. The same as what came with the IF25. The light is directed more straight up. So we kind of I kind of tested this with and without the actual factory TR optic in there, and I found it worked better with the optics left in. The actual light itself. So what we did is okay, we placed it the optic back in there. Uh, I placed a, a piece of the 25% the light filter frosting over the top of the actual LED just to soften it a little bit. So once I place that on there, in this case, and then this is just a cone which is like this with the bottom cut out and it threads down over where the actual bezel threaded on. So it's over the top, so the optic is in there, but the optic was actually lower down. So what I had to do is I had to lift the LED star up on a piece of aluminum and the optic so it's flush with the top, just so it gives you a bit more light out through. So what we did is we lifted the whole thing up from inside. Then we threaded this on the top of that. And instead of using the, um, where, is, where are you down, where are you going? Instead of using the cone versions, uh, painted white versions, round silver ones, which you seem to see in a lot of the factory lanterns. Uh, one example is like, if you look closely at this one, you see a huge silver cone. That thing is, is absolutely garbage. That thing is horrible. It creates a lot of artifacts. And they did the same thing at the bottom. They placed this huge silver one. It does nothing but create hard lighting artifacts and glare. That's basically nothing but glare. So what we did is the fact that this shines straight up and the lens is on here which is well we're just using a light frosting for a sample and we're plus the uh, the inner core which is the i call the amplification core so basically it, it illuminates that because it fits halfway over the actual um uh, the actual optics itself so it fits right over in the center and it does the same thing in that so the light shines inside of it and outside of it so it basically gets the light through that thing so you probably can't see it on the camera but if I place the cone one onto it, all it does is create that, uh, let's go back to it. The hard lighting, uh, oops, as you can see on the sides, you can't see so much here, but in visual, you can actually see it. It's quite sharp. It's basically glare. But now, if you take that off and instead take a completely flat mirror, place it on the top. Let, let's do this on something a little more... Uh, flat like this and if you look closely as the mirror goes on the top actually I need to turn the light off on the ceiling just give me a moment here we're gonna do that just so you can see it a little better okay so now it's really hard to because the cameras can't really adjust and see what the eye can see what I'm discovering is by placing a flat mirror across the top, you can see it. It illuminates everything from down here across very evenly. But if you look at something off to the side, when I do that, like over here, you notice how the light, well, the camera adjusts but it amplifies the actual light output. You, you really can't see it, but uh, let's, let's try this on a lower mode and see what it does. Uh, let's turn it off. Turn on the lowest mode in the step mode. So, okay, right now we have that. So we take the cone one that you see in so many horrible designs, place it on the top, and you get this hard line right across, which is there, which is called glare. And you place, oops, my bad. It's hard to say, hard to do because it's just sort of bouncing on top. But place a flat mirror across, which I'm trying to balance it, which is kind of hard to do. There you go. You know, the camera adjusts really quick on my phone, but if you do it quick enough, uh, right across. If you look at it there, you can actually see it. it. What it does, it actually increases the light output. It amplifies it. Because what's happening is that the mirror itself is basically doing what 
what a laser, what the uh, the old uh, laser, uh, what do you call it, ruby lasers used to do. Uh, the drying may explain it a little better. What I found is that using the cone one, it does nothing but drive the light beams outwards on the side and creates a glare effect. That's what it does. But if you add a flat mirror across straight across the top, that's exactly perpendicular with the actual output of the the beams itself. The light is directed straight up and then straight back, back and forth. So it, it increases the reflection or the actual reflection. It increases the actual output. And what happens is that center pulse that I place in here is illuminated quite evenly on top because the simulated effect is that when you look at the lantern itself, let me turn on the lowest mode. You can't really see it. It's lighted. It's illuminated evenly all the way to the top. As if, if you look at it this way, the LEDs are down here. But if you look at it this way, it looks like there's LEDs up here because what you're seeing, you're seeing a complete reflection of the LEDs on both sides. So it basically simulates the effect of having LEDs on both the top and the bottom. So when you you know increase it up, so you, what you have is then you have no shard light out the side because there's no mirrors reflecting at the side. No mirrors like this, I should say, around things. It's basically the light amplification. It's sort of like a flat plane wavian effect. Is the fact that it, it increases the light output by bouncing it back and forth, back and forth, to the point that it amplifies it. So it, the uh, the center post that I place in there, which is like an opaque, probably fifty percent opaque, and the light is directed straight out the sides, evenly in all directions. Uh, so what what you get is you have a you have a up firing light by using a flat mirror on the top. So when you place it against something flat, as you can see, the light direction is actually quite smooth, no glare. And let me see. Basically, it's almost 360. Unless I place it flat against it, the only dark area you have is a top, which is the same as what Delphium was, which is the lantern effect. But you have light beam that runs from all the way straight up here and all the way straight down. And everything in between is even. You can, as you can see in this pattern, it's very even. There's no glare from the sides. So this is something that I discovered by using a flat mirror a simple completely flat mirror directly above the leds so in, in the case of you know basically it's like you you take your flashlight you lay the mirror and directly in front it reflects it directly back and it, re, it amplifies it by reflecting it back and forth but it works better when you have the tri left in there because if it's just a bare leds they tend to create glare out to the side so if i left the bare leds in here and you look down, you would see them. They would be basically like sharp, hard lighting the artifacts through. So by leaving the TIR optic in there, and then using the 20% the uh, frosting film across the top, then using that post in the middle, which is roughly 50%. Now, this is only 20%. It's just for demonstration. But the entire lens is, and the post is the same thing. Same as how the LT1 works. Remember, the LT1 has that center post where the wires run through. That adds a, uh, also an increase in amplification of the light because it's down firing. So, and then plus the bottom is white as well, right? So that gives it some reflection. That's why the LT1 has such a nice even uh, tint, which is what I've been trying to achieve with this thing that most lanterns can never do. Is the fact that it's it's an even light in all directions. If you look down at it, look up at it, it's the same. There's no glare. It's just uh, a nice tint. And in this case, it's doing it with an upfiring LED. You look up at it, down at it, it's the same. So you're looking at roughly the same frosting level as what's used on the LT1 here on the outside and the center pulse. But instead, this uses the Tieropic original lenses or the, uh, the reflectors in there plus a flat mirror on the top that reflects the back. And it seems to amplify it. If I took this top off, which is hard to do now because it's a in place, it loses about 30% of its output. Because that mirror is actually increasing it, but by reflecting it back and forth. So it's, it's kind of a unique discovery that I found that, uh, that basically because I thought about the wavian color effect, how it works to increase the, the light out the front uh, that was done basically in, yeah, that picture, how the wavian color will use the mirror service to, to direct light back and forth to the center to increase its intensity straight at the front. So in this case, the flat mirror reflects it back and forth to the LEDs to increase its intensity of the sides in all directions because of the frosting. So right now, this is still using the IF25 factory um, 
software so you got to click twice and it changes the tint you can see now we're down to the warmest I'll turn this one off we're down to the warm side so if you go to that and it just goes to the cool white but basically what i've already done is if i change i've already changed the leds to the 27k and 5k 351 seams in that so it's a beautiful high cri because the factory ones i think it came with 3k to 65k or something it was not as great as what's in that so by by changing the um the LEDs, there you go, it's at full 5K right now. And the other end, that's full 5K and it steps. There's the warm side, it should blink when it's full warm. There it is. So there's the full warm side there. So basically what we have is a mini version of LT1, but it's using the original firing LEDs. So it makes it less complicated. And like I said, we know this thing costs between 35 38 to 40 yards USD. So by basically just designing the head and leaving everything else thing, and as for like with regards to the driver, maybe Lexel might want to want to redesign a driver. But we if we can make this lantern run the same Andrel firmware as the LT1 full size, it would be a great advantage because you have all the modes. Uh, we know that the switch has a bunch of LEDs in there, and then when you charge it, it change colors. So this is has it has potential to be changed to the same thing with this you know put the amber leds for night light or maybe like a maybe just like a, a two 2k or 2000k or led or something like that but so it could be similar to that or you even just leave it we're looking at costs on this thing we're going to try to keep the cost this one is uh side switch leds colors change possibility one style so we can match that if so far can do that and some did mention about a possible center red cellar LED. So maybe if Lexo can design it, if it doesn't cost too much, we'd have to talk to Sulfur and Barry and see if it's possible to basically create a hidden mode or another mode where you could click it onto it and basically turn on a red LED in the center because some seems to like red LEDs because for the, uh, the fact that it doesn't cause your night vision to screw up. So yeah, so we could go with that and uh, change that idea. Uh, what I'd like to see done Whereas the IF25 is just a smooth notch center tube. It's basically make this a smooth single barrel and knurl the whole thing so it more matches the LT1. So you have some grip because right now it has literally no grip. Whereas when you pick this up, it has some grip. You can hold on to it. But the battery tube, it should be knurled. Uh, the actual head design with the driver, we leave this with the fins. Because the fact that the driver and the LEDs now are on the same side. Whereas in this case, it's only the driver here. The LEDs are up here. It was, it was, it didn't need fins. So this area can be left the same. I think it looks aesthetic. It kind of works for it. Uh, and also, like I said, it has USB, uh, USB C charging port. And it's the same idea. You had to be careful with it, twist it this way to get out the port right there. Cause if you pull it straight up, it's going to tear off. Uh, but yeah, so it has that. So if Lexo wanted to work on the driver, he could probably do that. Maybe change that. He had a red LED, um, uh, in the center like i said i like to see nearly on the two uh flat base with possible recess from magnets so people are talking about yeah because it's smaller and probably more tippier than what would be like this thing is heavy it doesn't tip easily but it still can but because this is small and has like a smaller base uh so far and can remove this little lanyard thing here because we're going to have like a bail handle or a lanyard up on the top so they can remove this make this completely flat now inside the base i've noticed you now some flashlights i've seen ha would have a recess underneath a spring right here where you could place like a neodymium magnet that was close to the base so okay then it would become magnetic so one of the things they could do there is do that add a magnet in the base so that okay instead of having a pop on base you could use a flat metal plate like a large washer you stick it to your car hood or you stick it you know your roof like that or you could you know the accessory kit could have a flat metal wide base you could just stick it to and be larger in diameter to make it more stable that way you know it's easier than having something modified to stick on or thread on so by having a magnet added to it would probably be a good benefit for the mini in that case uh we could go with either a small bale hand metal handle or lanyard handle on the top uh, we know the LT1 was designed with a recessed bail handle, which works great, is inside here. Uh, it fits down, it locks and hides away. I've always added these lanyards to these things. And I have one of them, what I did is I took this and I drilled the holes out and placed the lanyard through the holes itself, so it's just a lanyard only, so it works either way. But in this case, 
This entire top end can be made of plastic with, 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 with a plastic top if they want to. Or they could go with metal if they're going to be colored. So that way if it's metal, aluminum, and if you do the, the flat dark earth or, or the, the orange ones, they could have this orange as well. So in this case, you're going to just have two little dimple holes here and a metal bale that folds down. If you make it, if you make it sort of square, that means it would actually fold down over the side. So that would work for that. So basically a metal bale would probably be an easy way of doing that. But have it so you can just basically tie a lanyard to because I kind of like lanyards for carrying and they kind of fold up easy from the pocket. Uh, that's something we can do with the uh, the mini. Colors. Colors are the same thing. We're still waiting for the colors. Uh, number one, flat dark earth, blaze orange, and olive green for this one. So basically we discussed this in an earlier video for that one as a bronze, which seems to work out. And he also did a bright green, but it was like two test samples. So, so let's hope they can get the colors produced for this one and do the same thing for the mining in the same case. Uh, driver changes, if possible, without adding too much cost. Like again, that's something Lexa can look at. And Toykeeper has already developed a beautiful software version of Andrew for this thing. Like Andrew has been my favorite software for years, ever since she created the thing, and it's perfect in his lantern. There's nothing I want to see change with Andrew in this thing. It's it's just basically perfect as it is. Um, just a matter of you know having the chip that can accept the actual Andrew programming in this lantern would be great. And Lexel, I'm not sure. I never really pull this one apart to see what kind of driver system this runs, to see if it's um, if it can run Android or not, or be reprogrammed. If not, maybe Lexel can redesign it to handle that. Because we talked about 7135s, and, and in this case, we would basically set it as an amperage, right? Not have it adjustable like this. In this case, it would be set at uh, at a maximum. And currently, I resistor this one back because original. IF25 a maximum would suck like three and a half amps from the battery so at run time you're looking at a hour it would step down anyway so basically right now on um, let's see that's the moonlight that's low one medium two medium three so this medium three will run for about six hours on that because it's only pulling roughly around um i think 0 0.50 0 0.60 amps so because the 21 700 with 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 500 5 000 milliamp hours is pretty pretty impressive so yeah so if we if we did the design so that we run at a maximum 1.7 1.5 amps on maximum i think we'd be good and looking at a target at around 3000 or not 3000 might be saying 300 to 350 lumens maximum we'll still have a small tiny compact lantern that's not much bigger than the um, well it's a little taller but the, that's expected because it's a lantern than what the fw3a is but it'll still have better runtime and more output by far than things like the Zanflare um, T1. This is the one that I had. I had three of these. Two of them failed completely because I tried to modify them. This is the only one that's left working. It's still changed, but basically how, to, how I got that to do it, I basically had to strip it down. I had to rebuild the driver. And because the fact that it's too sensitive, I placed a lockout switch on the side. It's like, okay, but I still didn't like the fact that it heats up the actual one single 18650 in a battery. So, it, you know, before still for a $20 or $17 light, it's still great. I placed lantern so you can hang a thing. I still like it. This is the last remaining one. I placed a screw on the top uh, so it's a little more sensitive. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's still good. But still, this right now at mode 3 produces more light than this on maximum. And on maximum, this thing gets about two hours, whereas this will run for almost five. So... Uh, it seems a bit the same. So yeah, so we're looking at a good balance of runtime, good balance, and we can even go less. You know, on a we could have a maximum or even a turbo mode like that, which is intense. That could run say a hour, but the thing is, it'll have to step down after a few minutes because it'll overheat anyway. But you know, if someone wants a turbo mode that lights up an entire, you know, area like this, which is crazy, and then you have you have you have your standard modes like that, which. Uh, Let's see, you got one, two, three, and it gets brighter. The camera keeps adjusting, but then turbo mode is intense. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's pulling more like three plus amps from that. But yeah, this is basically what we're looking at. The LT1 full size, and then the LT1 mini, which is you know a fraction of the height, much skinnier, very smaller, single cell, 21700 or 18650 if you put a sleeve in there, and small enough that you can basically put into a sock or a small sleeve, and only weighs a few ounces, and it's more of a backpacking style lantern. This is what the goal is on this thing. And I kind of really like how the, the lens using the flat mirror reflect 
reflection thing set up works. Um, it's almost like a flat plane wavian, wavian color effect. Whereas, you know, I've tried all these things, all those different types of reflectors. They're all useless. And what I'll be doing is I'll be doing a drawing on this, how this was designed, and submitting it to Sofern in the um, the team chat on BLF. And we can work from there and see what we can get. And uh, let's hope to keep the cost of this one down because basically this is something Sofern already created really well. Is the IF25. It's a two-channel, tint ramping, has charging. They have a good base to start with. So it's just some modifications to the way the, uh, the, the LED's positioning is, the head design, the driver, the, uh, the, uh, the firmware, and the base design. Uh, I think we can make an LT1 Mini out of this and keep the price down to uh, a good price retail and even maybe for a good price. But yeah, this is what it is. And as for a micro... We'll maybe work on that in the future, but right now I'm still working on the accessory kit for the BLF LT1 full size, which I because I've been going through a lot of a lot of family stress, a lot of financial stress. You know, I'm selling my house, things like that, trying to downsize, so I have limited time to basically put on these things. But this one I kind of focus on because there was a demand for it, and I want to I want to make this as as much as a success as what the LT1 was because the entire market has been lacking. You know, a good lantern, and this is probably my best modification, which was a plastic common one, four eighteen six fifties, a nice high CR LED. Uh, it's an Angic Q light driver inside that that has different modes, and uh, but still, it's it's what it is. It's big, bulky, and does you know does the thing. But the the LT one is much better lantern than what that is in so many ways, and this can be even even better again in so many ways for a fraction of the size like look at that look at the difference thing and it's just uh it's something that we need it's heavy it's metal you know the market doesn't offer those kind of things but yeah that's uh that's a video that we did on that so stay tuned soon we'll be posting drawings of that and updates in the lt1 mini thread very soon on on this one and for now any guys guys have a good night.